goes to the high school. Okay. Yeah, we looked around, but because prices are falling, so we said it will happen next year. Next year. Because the is going to... They just want to talk about vineyards and root, root stock and stuff. Some people just want to drink wine and eat cheese. Either way, it's fine with me. Uh, I figured it's really nice outside. Yeah. It's not raining right now, so if you guys want, we can go in the vineyard. There, there's some fruit that we haven't picked yet. Sure. So we can eat some fruit, and then we'll, we'll come back, like drink some wine, and we'll set up wine tasting here for you guys. We can go out through the winery, hopefully. Can we go near the parking lot at all? We can, if you need to. That's great, because I'm just flip my other shoes on. Yeah, yeah, no problem. And... Yes, we, we only, we make 3,500 cases. Uh-huh. Which is, isn't a whole lot, but... Quite a good amount. Of Here's what we've already picked, and uh -huh. you can... You can almost tell it's a different grape because the leaves are turning sooner. Uh -huh. A lot of the leaves, that's all Chardonnay down there. Mm -hmm. The leaves are turning yellow. We picked that over a month ago. We picked that probably a month and a half ago. All of this is Cabernet Franc. And I think, depending on how much it rains today, we'll probably pick it on Tuesday if you guys want to come. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we'll, we'll go down and taste some. This is, uh, there's a lot of different ways to grow grapes, ways to train them. Mm -hmm. And this is... This is the way that I think works best for Virginians. It's called VSP. And it, I mean, you can sort of see what we're doing. We're trying to get all the grapes to grow at this level and then to have about four feet of foliage. And this is where all the we get all the carbohydrates from this. Right. And then it puts them all here. It's easier to pick. Uh, it's harder for the birds to get to it. Um, so. All right, so. Just in time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was a very good time. We did good. Yeah. <laughs> so. So pretend, so kind of walk you through it, pretend we picked, we all came on Tuesday and we picked, <laughs> and we picked all that Cab Franc. Yeah. So then what we would do is we would get it off the stems, we de-stem it, because the stems will, if, you don't want it to ferment on the stems, it'll, it'll be real, real tannic, kind of, again, like green. Um, so we, that machine that's up there is a de-stemmer, you just drop them in and it does its magic and the grapes pop out and the stems pop out somewhere else. So it's up there because then we sort, we run a sorting table and we sort it again by hand. By hand. So anything that again doesn't look like a, like a really good grape or um, you, sometimes we'll still get stems or, or we'll get uh, like bird damaged grapes, anything like that, we'll sort out then. But the stuff that makes it in, then we, we ferment on, if it's a red wine, it ferments on the skins. And that's where red wine becomes red. And I can show you, because we have glass. This is grapes oh, that we, we picked um, four days ago, and then we de-stemmed them three days ago. So they've been sitting in here. There's some juice because gravity naturally breaks the grapes. There. We haven't crushed them, okay. but they'll still break, and there's still juice in here because they, they kind of crush themselves. So after, and this, I have added yeast to this, but it hasn't really started fermenting. But this is... Four days, it's about this color. Wow. So that's pretty pretty good, but that, this is how they make, if you guys have had a blush or a rosé wine, mm -hmm. what they do is they just stop it right now and press it with yeah. about this color. Maybe maybe yesterday would have been a better day to do it. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little light, but it's, I mean, it's real thick looking because there's so many solids in it. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been filtered or anything. Mm -hmm. But if you wanted to make a rosé wine, you would just press it yesterday. Um, if you want to make a... Red wine, we ferment the whole thing like this. We'll ferment it in this bin for, kind of depends on the t sort of ambient temperature, but may maybe about two weeks, maybe between a week and two weeks. Oh. It's full of, just like that bin, there's grapes and, and grape juice in this tank. But this is fermenting, it's, it's rocking. It's about halfway done. So we picked this on 12 days ago, and it's, 
We let it sit on the skins, the cold soak, for like two or three days. We added the yeast. Now it's fermented. So what, what Ben's doing, because we have to con continually mix this up, and we have to continually add, introduce oxygen during fermentation for yeast to, for yeast to survive, it has to be, there has to be oxygen in the environment. They'll, yeast will kind of kill themselves. The things that kill yeast are heat, alcohol, and a lack of oxygen. And the things that yeast produce are heat, alcohol, and a lack of oxygen. Oh. So we've got to help them out. So we're taking the, because it's fermenting also, and it's, there's carbon dioxide being created, it pushes all the grapes to the top. So there's grapes up here and juice down here. So Ben's draining the juice, and this is the juice. It's coming out of the bottom just by gravity. And so it's getting some oxygen right here. And then it's being pumped into that tank where it gets more oxygen, and then we'll pump it back over the top, where it'll wet all of the all of the grapes at the top and it'll sort of mix out, get everything back to like square one again. And then tomorrow we'll just do it again, and the next day we'll just do it again. We'll just do this for weeks and weeks and weeks. This is for another week and it's already got color that I would be happy with. It's very impressive today. Um, like the stuff in there needs more time, but it hasn't been started to So you, you can, the actual cellar. Yeah. Uh, can we go, go in, in there? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe some fruit flies. Where do you get your oak from and do you need to have always new oak? Or yeah, every year we have to, we buy new oak. Uh, is it by your choice or by all? By all my choice. Yeah, you don't have to, you don't even have to use barrels. Uh, that's, that's a, like, I like use metal barrels and This year, the 2009. So a lot of these are empty. That corner is full. But we haven't even filled a lot of these. We're still making them wide. We'll go to the right Yeah. So when, we, when you get your glasses, you'll be hanging on that corner. It's the only flavor we get to add. Mm -hmm. So we get, we go nuts with barrels because it's like the only we grow the fruit. You ferment it. You get your yeast. It's such a, it's so subtle the difference it makes. And then you have a big opportunity to kind of to flavor the wine mm -hmm. with with oak. So. So we, we go nuts. We love oak. Uh, we buy we do buy new oak every year. We try to get about 30% new oak every year. Um, so that, for us, that's about 25 or 30 barrels we buy every year. Um, different wines require oak. Different wines don't. Some wines, oak works well with them. Some wines, it doesn't. Um, and you sell?